flashlight off as well? Um, yeah. You started? Mm-hmm. Alright. So, I know you guys have been hearing me talk about my winter forecast, and I've been saying I'm going to drop it for a while. Well, I dropped it on November 15th, I believe. Yeah, I dropped it around like November 15th. And basically, you have my map over here, and my key over here. And it's still reaching out to a lot of people right now, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm basically seeing. So, what we're going to do is, for a second, we're going to go over to this little goofy map I made over here. And it took me about, I would say, two months of data to come up with this mm-hmm. conclusion. So basically... Can you tell us what type of data you have been looking at? Absolutely. Of course I can. I don't know if you guys under- understand this. I was going to show you guys this for the next lecture, which is now. So I'll give you a little bit on what I was looking at before. So basically, there's three different indicators, or as they call, for me, what I call it, mood stabilizers for our planet, and they're called teleconnections. They basically regulate our climate and our temperature, and they go in cycles. So, if we go over to the NAL, right over here, this stands for North Atlantic Oscillation, and basically it dictates the blocking in Greenland, which high pressure forms and a trough forms on the East Coast. So basically the positive phase is if you want nice weather, that would cause nice weather. That would indicate that a low pressure system would form up in Greenland and you would have rising heights down up on the East Coast. So as you can see, we have values that are beginning to drop. So this indicating that around say Thanksgiving there's a possibility of a winter storm developing. I'm not gonna go exactly saying in detail if it's gonna be a snowstorm because it most likely will not. But weather is really all about probability, so if you really want to get into this field, and if someone asks you a week out, how many inches snow am I going to get? Am I going to get one? You can't answer like that. You have to wait for the time to get closer, and then say, well, there's this percentage of this possibility happening, and then there's this percentage of this possibility happening. So this is one of the things I look at, which is basically the blocking that goes on in Greenland. Another thing that I also look at as well, Here we go. The Pacific North American, this has to do with the West Coast. So basically with the Pacific North American, we are right now in a negative phase. So you have a trough on the West Coast and you have high pressure east of there. So as you can see over here, our Pacific North American begins to go positive. This allows a ridge to form on the West Coast and a trough begins to form on the East Coast. And these are a lot of things that a lot of meteorology forecasters look at. And the one bias issue that a lot of them tend to do, I don't, I try not to do it ever. The lines of uncertainty start to begin around November 25th, how they kind of get all wacky. So most likely it's going to be positive, and the way I'm able to tell that is when I look at my Earth 3D model that I was showing you before, I look at the actual water temperatures, and I see, okay, is there a correlation with this? And then I go, yes. And if there is no correlation with this, Keep in mind that this is using a weather model, and weather models only simulate the weather. They do not predict accurately 100% what the weather outcome is going to be. And I basically go off of that, and basically your primary driver of where your cold air really, really comes from, this is very important, and this is also one of the biggest pains to forecast this early in the game when it comes to Arctic outbreaks and cold shocks, is the Arctic Oscillation. So basically, in the North Pole, when high pressure is forming, it's displacing the Arctic air. That's usually when your winter starts to happen and your cold air starts to come to the U.S. Now, right now, we're in a positive phase, and there's one ensemble member. There's about 50 different weather model ensembles, which is pretty crazy. So these are all different weather models, but they're different ideas. And only one is dropping negative. Personally, me, if I had to take a rough estimate, I'm going to say December 15th would be the most likely possibility, because it's not gonna happen this early in the game. It doesn't usually happen that early. And as you can see over here, what I'm saying makes sense because we're gonna be stuck in a positive phase. So this is one of the many things that I look at when it comes to forecasting the weather. Um, Another thing also that I look at over here is our Madden-Julian oscillation, which you're gonna learn down the road if you pursue a career meteorology. And this can be very complex. I mean, right off the bat, you have all these different phase plots right over here, and you try to ask yourself which one's the most accurate. And the thing is, sometimes the question and the answer isn't always the same. One year, the European weather model, which nailed Sandy like, like seven, ten days out, it was crazy. 
can do really go, you know, say forecasting hurricanes, but can do horrendous when it comes to what's going on along the equator, around the international dateline, just east of Indonesia. So, <clears throat> I'm going to use the NCP one over here. Now this looks like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, but if you note, it's slightly chilly outside. Basically what's going on over here, if you have phases three, four, five, and six, you're allowing convection to shift further east. So what's going on is it's suppressing storm development up here or in the El Nino regions, allowing that convection to come up over here. So when you go over more towards seven, eight, one, and two, and we're right now in, in phase two, you allow more convection to make its way up here from the international date line. This over here, I like to call the circle of death. So when this little squiggly snake over here goes into that circle, it doesn't have any effect on our weather. But right now, we're in phase two, and you use these values over here, and I've never seen any meteorologists or anyone mention this, but I tend to you know, come up with all of my different theories and whatnot, and they do work out for me sometimes, that the more this would make, this would make sense, if this line is more outward, there's a stronger influence because if it's inward, it's considered the circle of death. So this is a lot of things that I look at when it comes to forecasting. And I had to monitor this about a two month span. So making a winter forecast isn't exactly easy, but what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna go back to my map real quick and I'm gonna explain the key that I made over here. I don't know if you could see that. I'll, I'll read to the best of my ability and then I'll let Claire take over afterwards. So I have us in the red, of course. And what it says is that what's expected in this area is to basically get pounded this year. A strong thermal gradient that's our chronic zone along the coast will allow intense snowfall, and warm SSTs, which is sea surface temperatures, will allow nor'easters to explode with the possibility of hurricane force winds, blizzards, severe nor'easters, possible if not likely, which is a high area of concern and well above average snowfall likely along the cold. So if I go back over real quick to my little uh, website, but I can't go on that one website because the school blocked it. Mm -hmm. Really, it sucks. It's beautiful. It would probably crash the computer. What I'm saying would make sense. Yep, no. mm -hmm. Taking up my time. There we go. Move over here. Move over here. So if we focus in on the East Coast over here, what's gonna happen is when we start getting our storms at first, I mean, this is, it's like basically it's on fire. This is like running above 10 degrees Celsius, 10, 12, 12 degrees Celsius. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have storms that are gonna start forming close to the coast, and we're gonna get like rain, mix, those kind of storms. But what's gonna happen is as we go deeper into winter, these low pressure systems are gonna start forming and shifting east because it's cooling off the waters along here, and this tends to happen in the winter. That's why usually months like January and February, a lot of your storms are mostly snow because you have an injection of Arctic air over here, but also storm tracking is absolutely critically important. So what I just explained, it's, the proof is right here. Can you tell us what the, uh, or tell the class what the different colors mean? Yes, this is a deviation difference from relative to normal for the temperatures. So once this blue puddle really filled in along here where there's warmer than average waters, high pressure will eventually form and it will bump up in this area. And then you're gonna have a trough form like this. You're gonna have a ridge form like that. Basically the same thing I showed you before. And that's where we're really gonna get bombarded. Now, if someone was saying, oh, we're gonna have a really bad winter and I see the waters are cold over here, I'm like, where's your convection gonna form? But this over here, this is a, a huge major warning sign that we're gonna get a very active winter this year. And this, is, this isn't hype, I am the most conservative person if you ever follow me with a Twitter page or if you decide to choose to follow it. I remember it was my psychology class last year mm -hmm. and there was a snowplow company because my friend's boyfriend works at a snowplow company. About 50 of them came in and wanted to take like pictures and like talk to me or like, interrupt my class. But you know Dr. Barnhart? Mm -hmm. Was his class. Okay. And it was like, you did so good this winter, you know my company follows you with a Twitter page now. And I'm like, I didn't think I had that much to deal with, but it was like, it was like a really good feeling. So I know what I'm doing is like right, and I try to be as accurate to my ability because one day I want to get into the private sector meteorology and forecast for companies that are willing to pay a lot of money, and I have to be right. I mean, my career will always depend on that. 
So basically, if I were to go back, get this out of the way, you don't need that anymore. If we go down, continuing over here in the blue, I expect these areas to be colder with above average snows. However, not as snowy due to sinking of air, we'll get a head start, but the red region will take hold once the SSTs cool off and track shifts east. Red will perform better. So if we go back over real quick over here, as you can see, going over to red, literally, you're gonna have storms that will form anywhere between here or here and kind of go like this. And I do believe from the Appalachian Trail starting in Northern Georgia, going right up to Boston, Massachusetts, or I would say that area, I think they're gonna get hammered. I really truly do believe that because Arctic air locking in over here, drilling this direction down over here, this would really allow not only intense snowfall, but a long duration event, like a longer than average duration event because you have blocking in the ocean and you have blocking up here so the storm can't really go anywhere. And then the blues that I was explaining before is right around this outer edge and it wouldn't be as bad. So if we go back real quick again, the lighter blues, um, you have your average snows. I expect temps to be below average with a higher deviation north and less so south. This increases rainfall south with a bit more snow north. There's a good margin in this area over here in the lighter blues. Once we get over to our light purples, I dictate and explain that while below average temperatures along with low average snowfall, I a brutal Arctic air with intense divergence of air. So your snowfall chances will be cut off by at least 55 to 65 percent this year. And the reason why that is because if you want a nice bad blizzard, snowstorm, whatever down over here, you have to have Arctic air coming from somewhere. You would have to have a very powerful storm, and once it gets to things like 90 millibars, it manufactures its own cold air. But without a high pressure system, it's really stressing the storm. So if high pressure's over here, and any of the moisture that's being thrown inland like this will eventually get chewed up by the dry air. But the Arctic air will be brutal in this area. At least I believe to think so, because what's gonna happen is as we go down the road, you're gonna have a polar vortex displacement that we talked about before and a piece of it's gonna park over here. Not the whole thing though, because we'd be frozen to death if that were to happen. And it will it'll kind of allow like a conveyor belt of storms to kind of go around like this. So if I continue, over here in the dark purple, this was probably the biggest pain area to forecast. I did a map last year, and I was able to pick up this one storm that was in the one storm in Tennessee and then Arkansas. I actually was able to pick up at least 87% of it I got right, I was like, Someone brought that up to me like a couple of days ago, but it's this is the most difficult to forecast. So the dark purple on my map last year nailed a horrific ice storm two months in advance, and I expect the clash of air masses to coincide here with potentially bad ice storms this year for these areas. So it's basically the interior areas really is where your ice storms tend to form, not so much along the ocean, because when you have an ocean influence, the surface temperatures warm up quicker. So that's why we don't tend to really get ice storms, even though we will get freezing rain, but never have a full catastrophic event. So this area was a pain forecast. And if we go back over here, down to the green, with an active subtropical jet, I expect above average rainfall here with slightly below average temps. So this is very important if you want big bad storms over here, because if you have a SoCal, say, atmospheric river, or Pacific storm come through, or what can also form over here is called a Gulf Mexico screamer, and it would go like this. So this is kind of like your, your, basically your main train track this year. And a lot of the storms, you're gonna notice, if they're gonna go over here, they're gonna be deflected away from this area. So if I continue going into my keys, going down, the gray area will introduce severe weather, which will be prominent as our east is being strength, grabbing moisture and unstable air from the Gulf of Mexico. This right here I have outlined where your severe weather can form, because as the storm is kind of going and meandering along like this, what you're having is you have your warm front over here, and your cold front coming down over here, and you have your unstable air mass coming up like that. And then basically go down over to the yellow with slightly above average temps, slightly below average precipitation, orange above average temperatures, below average precipitation, and then brown will start off with rain and snow like they are right now, and then it will be followed by a long duration of below average precipitation and well above average temps. So basically, you're going to have a very dominant ridge over here, but you're going to have what's called an upper level low cut off from this part of the jet stream, and it will meander and then get picked up by the subtropical jet and come up the coast like this with a nice prop setting up like that. Is it okay if I do a uh, screenshot of this? So that they can use this as a reference for their discussions or a course part of the test? 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Claire. Remember to study. Excellent job. Thanks for showing us all the hard work you did.